Now to the ever-evolving saga with the Syracuse University football team. Players sitting out practice again today. Fourth time in nine days they haven't been on the field over COVID-19 concerns. Let's bring in Stephen Bailey, SU football beat writer for Syracuse.com. Also a very frequent contributor to our Orange Nation program here on News Channel 9. Joins us live. Stephen, thanks for uh, being with us this afternoon. Appreciate it. Oh, no problem. No practice to watch. So uh, thanks for having me on. I guess not. Uh, team not out there. We've got uh, our own Josh Martin, who he's been up there all afternoon, just keeping an eye on things. Empty <laughs> fields. So what are you hearing, though? Still those same concerns over over testing and COVID concerns, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's an important distinction, though. So last Thursday and Friday, the team didn't practice. Those were the two first scheduled days of preseason camp. And instead, they had team meetings. They covered a lot of topics in those. And publicly earlier this week, what players had said is, is the primary concern was making sure other ACC schools are testing frequently. And that basically, that if Syracuse's players want to go play in, in a season, they can trust that their opponents are taking it just as seriously. They're mitigating risks of exposure and then mitigating the amount of people who'll be quarantined. And then, uh, one, health risks, but two, unable to play. You know, if guys, uh, the ACC rules 14 days for anyone who is in close contact with someone as a positive test, it's not hard to imagine a scenario where teams are very, very short on players. So uh, I think the players were really concerned about that. But yesterday they sat out for in-house testing concerns. Basically, they want Syracuse to issue more tests during preseason camp. Head coach Dino Baber said previously that they've been doing it every other week. Um, so players basically want more than that. I mean, consider playing football for 14 days and not getting practiced or not getting tested anytime during that span. Uh, it's easy to understand why those guys were a little bit uh, uncomfortable with that. And basically they're waiting until the results come back. So those the tests were taken yesterday. Uh, they didn't practice today as they wait. And we'll see if the test results are in for practice tomorrow or Sunday. Yeah, I mean, given the way testing results come back here, I mean, uh, you would have to suspect, right, that they will likely not practice again over this same issue tomorrow and possibly Sunday too, right? Yeah, that's about what, what I'm considering. I, I think maybe Sunday and then uh, they've Monday was supposed to be an off day, but now they've moved. I believe they've moved to practice then. So uh, they might end up getting back Monday, but whenever the, the test results are in, supposedly they will be returning to the practice field. Of course, things change <laughs> day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. Exactly. Now we have heard from a few players. They have those scheduled um, times in front of the media, um, remotely, of course, a couple of offensive players, Tommy DeVito, a couple of defensive players. You've heard them. We've heard them. Um, they certainly be, seem to be speaking kind of what some might consider the company line. We're just here to practice, 100%. We're, we're preparing no matter what the season is. Uh, by missing four of nine practice days, it seems like they're speaking much louder with their actions than their words to me. Uh, what it, what's your read on all this? It's an extremely difficult position to be in, to be one of those players. Uh, if, I think a lot of guys in the locker room do want to play under the right circumstances. And to do that, you know, so, so behind closed doors, they're working to achieve um, increased testing. Uh, you know, they want to see it two times a week during the season. That's what John Wildhack called for. Frankly, they could, could do it more than that. The Big 12's plan includes three times per week testing during the season and heart health checks. The ACC has not come out with a revised medical plan since the Big, uh, Big 10 and Pac-12 canceled. So I think behind closed doors, they are doing what they can to basically get things in place where if you start a season, you'll be able to finish it. But yeah, when they come out publicly, it's a hard position to be in because you, you don't want it to look like the world is burning. You don't want more guys to opt out. You know, you don't you don't want to give the decision makers a reason to cut the season. Basically, I think what the players want is, look, if there's not going to be a season, it's going to be because we don't want it to happen. And if we're not there yet, we need to kind of toe that line. So it's difficult. We heard from, from Chris Elmore this week, and he had basically said that he – was kind of not was leaning toward not playing and then came back with the team and I think there's just a lot of guys who don't entirely know and, and it's hard to blame them because they're the protocols aren't really made clear you know the ACC presidents met yesterday and didn't release an, an update to kind of their expectations so you know the players have shown their power but at the same time they're also kind of stuck in the middle here and it's it's a difficult position for any of those guys to navigate. You can tell just listen to them, listen to them, to them take questions and 
try and respond. Last quick one for you. 512 here on Friday, August the 14th. I know it's a crystal ball kind of question, but <laughs> are we, are we going to have SU football in an ACC football season? If I, if I had to say one way or the other, I would say no, but it's just, it's impossible to predict this far out. I, to me, I, I have a hard time seeing, if you start a season, seeing teams maintain enough players who are like capable of playing and cleared to play to continue on, right? It's kind of like if, if you have um, a spread at one school and you don't catch it in time, like what, like you're talking about Syracuse testing every other week, I mean, it doesn't take long for this thing to spread after a game. And if anyone who's in close contact with another player who tests positive has to sit out for two weeks, I mean, the, the numbers could tally up quickly. So I have my reservations, but there's a lot of money on the line here. And I know presidents and athletic directors are going to do whatever they can to play if they can find common ground with the players where, where the players feel safe doing it. Stephen Bailey, we're out of time, but I definitely want to have you back. This is going to be a continuing and evolving uh, story here. Stephen Bailey, Syracuse.com. He's the SU football beat writer, also a contributor to our Orange Nation program. Really love having you on tonight. Thanks so much for joining us and shedding some light on this story. Yeah, anytime. Thanks so much for having me. All right, stick around, everybody. We're going to be right back.